there are certain things which I did quite early. Uh, for example, cooking. Uh, I learned cooking when I was six years old. Uh, so if you remember Uganda in those days, uh, so we used to stay very far. We used to stay in, in, in Namagunga and we used to study in, in Kampala, in Buganda Road. Uh, but uh, I think I was homesick and so I had stayed home. But my mother, who had gone to work in Kampala, could not make it back to Kampala. And my sisters, they had to, to hide out somewhere in Kampala. And so uh, it was just my dad and I, and we had to eat. My dad was in his bedroom reading a novel. And he simply gave instructions. He said, go. Get a sauce pad, you know, uh, hit some water, you know, as in he was give, never to come and, you know, hover over me and see if, I'm doing, if I've burnt the house down or whatever, nothing. And Hello and uh, welcome to another Lived Quality Conversation on the Lived Quality Podcast. And today with me, I am privileged to have Margero, Margero Steven. I've worked with him uh before and uh, I've known him in different capacities. Uh, he's uh, a technologist, uh, he's a sportsman uh, and a parent and I really enjoy Magzo's philosophical thinking and we have really good conversations. Um, yeah, uh, I think that's as much as I can <laughs> introduce you for now unless you have something to add, Magzo. Uh, no, there's the important one, of uh, also known as the Bearded Wanda, uh, <laughs> chairman of Wanda Inc., uh, Wanda Inc. being uh, my family, and uh, that comes from my family name, which is Magero, which means Wanda's. So, yeah, and, uh, yeah, I'm a family man. I have uh, three girls, the Wanda girls, and one boy, the Wanda boy, and one wife, the Wanda queen. So that is us. Yeah, awesome. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. Like when I introduced, I once went to a men's camp, men only camp, and I was trying to do a similar introduction. And I said, I have uh, one wife. I'm always married <laughs> to the one wife. And I was saying, wait, why, what do you mean? I, I thought you only married the one. It's like, no, nah, where, where I come from, it's a bit different. <laughs> you can have multiple, but yeah, in this case, me, I'm only <laughs> with the one. <ones. laughs> yeah, that is the legacy of our Africa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, so, Magzo, um, if, uh, like I say here on, on this podcast, you know, we, we jump off the conversation somewhere and then follow it wherever it leads us. And uh, we, we try not to constrain it. And so today I was uh, thinking that maybe we could uh, start from the place of, uh, you know, as a, as a parent in a family, um, I'm curious how that, uh, having that role in a family has influenced your personal life as, you know, you've uh, gone through life and are there some interesting lessons in there to share for you from, from your experience and, yeah, mostly that. So we could start around there and then see where we go. <laughs> Very good. Uh, so it's actually interesting. Um, so when we, when my wife and I decided we we're going to start a family, uh, okay, no, let me not say that. <laughs> when we discovered that we we're going to start a family, because there was no discussion of now we can start. When we discovered that we we're going to start a family, uh, we wanted to do things right, right? So I had uh, observed my parents and I wanted to, uh, the things that they did, I wanted them to do them because I felt like I was a good human being. And <laughs> if my kids, uh, you know, get the same, uh, they will be okay. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, there were a few things which I could not put my finger on uh, because, for example, I have two others, I had two other siblings um and we were different in terms of how we, we came through yeah so we had this one sibling who always got suspended from school and you know was always in trouble with the authorities 
Uh, well, for me, it was not until towards the end of high school that I also started getting those issues. And this was because uh, before that, I thought, you know, you could not let down, you know, our parents would be so depressed and all these things. But then there was this long holiday when I was at home and my sister was suspended. And I'm like waiting to see the reaction. And my daddy came from work. I was at the door. I greeted him. I told him, hey, there is... Uh... <laughs> he went, opened her bedroom door and said, you are dead, you are dead, you are dead. <laughs> then he calmly closed the door. He didn't even slam the door. He closed the door, went and read his newspaper. So I was like, what? So, I mean, all this time I've been policing myself and <laughs> there's no... <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be so, a mere threat. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> after that, I said doing whatever I wanted. By that time, of course, also the punishment was. I think it was difficult for parents to punish us at that age. So yeah. So it was only that time that I, you know, but I was different. So I was trying to figure out why the three of us had, you know, sort of gone on different paths. I couldn't put my finger on it because I felt as if they treated us the same. Uh, you know, the discipline was the same and, and that kind of stuff. So, of course, we turned to books and then you talk to people. And so uh, when we were getting married, there was a lot of, you know, counseling groups and, you know, this will help you with this, this will help you with that. Um, and so we got a lot of information or advice or guidance on how we could do certain things. Uh, one of the things that really uh, transcended from just family to my life was a, someone recommended a book called how to listen so kids talk and how to talk so kids listen mm. for me that was you know very interesting because i realized that the, the principles up uh, suggested there not only applied to, to kids but also to people in general right and mm. there were things like you know you have to uh, acknowledge you know whatever the person is saying right regardless of whether you think it's rubbish or whatever you know acknowledge it and once you acknowledge it uh you know you even you yourself you become more receptive to it and you know they now also respect you and then they will also listen to you so it was very helpful and helped me especially in my career as a pm as you know where i am trying to always negotiate things with people um and so that really drove my career uh really far i think because one of the things i think I have been good at okay i've got feedback from people is uh, being able to motivate a team to do their best to perform at their peak and to do that it takes you know understanding people and uh, figuring out what makes them tick um, and then you know getting that to work the other thing that was really important for me uh, was about uh, so in, in in other instances outside the family it's called teamwork Right, working as a team where you know you support each other. So one of the things that my folks used to do was chores. You know chores. Now the chores were rotational, meaning everyone did everything. So we were so lucky in that case because, uh, or maybe because I was an only boy. But you know it wasn't that. You know these are boys' jobs, these are girls' jobs. It was just jobs. And today you are cooking. Uh, tomorrow you are cleaning the house. The other day you are doing laundry. And then it rotates again. So everyone has a chance to do everything. And um, one thing that was not permitted was exchanging. Like, oh, no, you enjoy cooking, so you you do cooking all the time. No, no, no. no. That was not allowed. <laughs> the rules were <laughs> you do your job on your day. And and the essence, I think, for, for my parents was that you learn to do all these things, right? And whether you have a preference, we don't care as long as you, if you repeat several times, you'll get good at these things. Um, and so for us, for me now, uh, I have my wife who has a different uh, <laughs> set of upbringing and, you know, she doesn't want her children to, to do certain things, right? So for me, uh, in, in, and I don't know, maybe it's also because of modern parents, there are certain things which I did quite early. Uh, for example, cooking. Uh, I learned cooking when I was six years old. Uh, so if you remember Uganda in those days, uh, so we used to stay very far. We used to stay in, in, in Namagunga and we used to study in, in Kampala, in Buganda Road. 
but uh, I think I was homesick, and so I had stayed home. But my mother, who had gone to work in Kampala, could not make it back to Kampala, and my sisters, they had to, to hide out somewhere in Kampala. And so uh, it was just my dad and I, and we had to eat. My dad was in his bedroom reading a novel. And he simply gave instructions. He said, go, get a sauce pad, you know, uh, heat some water, you know, as in he was give, never to come and, you know, hover over me and see if I've, if I've burnt the house down or whatever, nothing. And for me, that was, as in I, I, I that's the attitude I want, but that's not the attitude that my wife would allow me to have with the children, right? As in my six-year-old boy, like right now, he's not even allowed to wash dishes because, you know, he will break all the dishes, you know, the, that kind of thing. But my dad was like, yeah, you're going to cook and you're going to serve. And I cooked rice. I didn't burn the house down. You know, he was like, you know, measure two cups, uh, you know, put, uh, and then I would come and show him this. He looks there and says, yes, that's fine. Then you go back, you know, fry some onions. How do I cut them? You cut. So I had to interpret how to cut. Then he, I show him. Then he says, oh, okay, that, that, that looks okay. You go, go on with that. Uh, yeah, so I think uh, when I, they, they, I have had to be creative in the way I try and do those things with my children. Uh, I, I can't get my way on, on all those. I can't give them the same childhood that I had. But I can find things. And so I set milestones. We are great with my wife. We set milestones. And we also, um, to give my wife comfort, we had to prepare uh, the kids for some of these things. Like going to the shop. Like for me, one day, they just said, go to the shop and buy stuff. But for the kids, for my kids, there was training. Where, you know, I went with them. I showed them, this is how you cross the road. Da -da -da. This is how you talk to the shopkeeper. And always ask for your change, even if you don't know the math, just say, where's my change? <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff. For us, we had to figure out the hard way where you came back home and they were like, where's the change? So, yeah, so same thing, like I said, even with the other one, even when, you know, you're at work or in other aspects of life, there is no expectation that because you've thrown someone into the deep end that they will get it right. As in, if you throw them into the deep end and they get it right, that's fine. If you throw them into the deep end and they don't get it right, you know, you understand. Uh, because, you know, you know, you know, not everyone has the same training and, and all that. So for me, that has helped me to have that understanding. You know, we had a guy, I worked in a place where uh, I don't know what the guy's problem was, but we'd be in a meeting with our boss and our boss would give out tasks or instructions. And, uh, you know, you would think everyone has understood. You go away, you come back to report. And <laughs> he understood something totally different. And the boss is banging tables and like, you know, what's going on here? So it seemed like it was going to be a gone case. Uh, but so I don't know what occurred to me in one of those meetings. I, when the boss said any other business, I said, you know, maybe it would be a good idea that we go around the table. And everyone, you know, plays back what they have understood their task to be. <laughs> and so, and so we, when, we, when we did that, and he played back what he had understood. <laughs> we, we soon saw where the problem was, right? So <laughs> he used to listen to the first sentence. And then, uh, you know, that was it. He would fill in the other blanks. He would not hear anything else after that. So it helped the boss a lot and it, it helped us, uh, which was cool. So similarly with my kids, uh, you know, uh, as I'm working through these family things, I have no expectation that, you know, a person should know. Even when, uh, you know, those things where you feel, oh, I have sacrificed for you, uh, you know, there's no expectation that, you know, they will appreciate it, right? Uh, there's only an expectation of, what me I'm bringing to the table. Uh, if I want them to appreciate it, I may communicate and say, hey, by the way, <laughs> I'm doing this thing. <laughs> and so just know I'm going to guilt trip you later on about this particular thing, you know, uh, that kind of stuff. 
and it also works, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, at, at work, you know, like uh, every time when I was a PM, every time when I would, you know, either take guys out or, you know, do something nice for the team, I would be like, yeah, you know, but you guys, I hope you realize that I'm paying for that day when I'll need you on a Saturday, you know, so, <laughs> so that, yeah. you know, it's not yeah. a thing where a person says, ah, you know, what's all this, you know, uh, so yeah, that's how I have. Uh, used my lived experiences to <laughs> to also impact my other aspects of life. Well, there's a, there's a lot in there to, to unpack a bit. Uh, like w- where you are sharing that a lot came to me, like, for example, the, the, the part of where the, your, your dad gives you the instructions and mm. just expects that that is obvious. Like, you know what that means. And when I juxtapose that with, you know, my, my son, he's nine. And so, I've, you know, over the last two, three years, I'm also doing the same thing. But now, <laughs> like you say, you know, my wife is uncomfortable about this. So now I have to, like, you have to manage <laughs> and bring it closer to where it should be. It's like, I, usually I would just say do, but now the, 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 the compromise, like, I will supervise. Like, okay, you go make your eggs, uh, but I'll watch just in case you're about to burn yourself so I can can intercept. <laughs> but in my case, the I burnt myself. <laughs> and then there was the question of, wait, what were you doing when you burnt yourself? It's like, well, I was trying to fry some genets. It's like, hey, you, should, you shouldn't do that. <laughs> you shouldn't do it that way. <laughs> Now that you've burnt yourself, I, I think you've understood <laughs> why you shouldn't. And so you, you, you take it from there. It's like you suffer your consequence and and you go. Uh, but also, I think like like you've, you've been sharing, most of these, they do cut across work. And going back to that book uh, about, uh, you know, how to, how was it? How, how to, to listen. How to listen so kids talk and how to talk yeah. so... Uh, kids so listen. kids listen yes i think uh you are so fortunate that you got that early because like some of us like for me this is a very you'd say recent lesson of uh knowing to to slow down and wait for things to complete and allow things you know create a space for th- for example if somebody is articulating like you have to like really <laughs> wait for them to finish at their pace and like really, really give them the benefit of doubt and don't rush to correct, <laughs> you know, allow for it to play out until the opportunity for maybe if you need to interject or correct, the opportunity will come, but having the patience to wait for it, that's uh, it takes work learning that stuff. And uh, once I learned, then I found myself now, now I'm teaching. <laughs> I'm also teaching this. I was like, no, no, you, this is how you do it. You, you don't, don't just allow, you know, allow your sister to do the thing the way she wants to do it. Then once she has figured out, because in her mind, she doesn't yet know until she completes what she's doing. Like she's thinking as she's doing. But once she finishes, then she will be able to see whether she has made a mistake or not. Now, if she hasn't seen, now at that point you can say, you know what, this thing, <laughs> you wanted this, but then you say you did this, so they, they're not matching. Maybe we twist it this way and the thing lines up. And so learning to do those things, uh, I think they are kind of like, they don't teach you and they don't tell you that (laughs) you have to. It's more like the situation pushes you and, and then you find yourself having to figure it out and having to work. And so for me, all these, these have, probably been like very recent lessons, uh, like probably in the last maybe five, six years. But I really, like once you get them, then they shape everything. Like work even becomes easier because now <laughs> you sort of like, I don't know which metaphor to use. It's kind of like, it, it, like let's say Formula One racing, right? Like you know where to put your car <laughs> on the track at which point and, to and you know, we, want to be overtaken. Exactly. So you, you sort of get that understanding of how to situate yourself 
in a way that normally you wouldn't get because like like you know the 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 general lifestyle like growing up back home the, the most common thing people will do is just tell you off <laughs> people will just tell you off and assure you and it's it's always combative there is no uh you'd say understanding and like you know part of what i really enjoyed working with you was kind of that it's like no you will know when you're wrong like definitely someone will tell you uh but until then you must be doing the right thing because everyone seems to be in agreement with what you're doing so th- that whole imposter syndrome you don't need to you don't need to really lean into it the, the whole fake it till you make is like no no just just do what you're doing it's fine whether it's fake or true whatever <laughs> just keep going the moment it doesn't work someone will say and so bringing that now for me for you you are taking yours out of home and then taking them to work <laughs> it's sort of like i'm doing the reverse it's like oh no 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 so doing taking them from work bring them home it's like okay so now uh you, you touched on the jobs to be done right <laughs> that's how like there's a million jobs to be done mm-hmm. and at first we were using that that mode of ah no no you you this do what you're good at but doing what you're good at man you, you, you people suffer it's like there are many things we are not good at mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and situations don't care whether you're good at the thing or not if the thing is to be done the thing is to be done like especially like if this can be fine like when you're dating life or what but the moment you get children now like for us having immigrated then then we got a child here man there's no one <laughs> it's just you the new mother and the newborn <laughs> now you have another child so now manage make life happen good luck and so you have to yeah. figure out as you go juggle things you quickly realize that whether you're good at the thing or not you have to do what you have to do and so you start to learn and do and and humble yourself and be okay with whatever level you can do it and hope the world doesn't burn uh, but in the process uh for me i found like my competence levels like they grew like the things i didn't imagine i could do i now could attempt mm. it's like the things that would bother me before and i would wait it's like oh maybe uh, i'll wait for my wife to deal with this because this is her domain now like that went it's like i didn't need to wait and so now mm. we we moved from Ah, but I told you to do this last time, and then you didn't, and then why? Like those, those were fights. Then you upgraded to. Uh, I don't like the way you you do the dishwasher, mm. so I'm going to try and do it before you do it because you, when you do it, <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> and, so, and so it became a good problem to have because now uh, it's like we were competing to solve the problems, which mm. is good. It's like you, you, instead of suffering from the problems now you're competing to solve them which is great and so and and then at the same time we're getting that recognition and respect of the different the different approaches we're like ah so you you do it that way ah, it, it's fine it's good that you did it but your way man it's maybe a bit slower or it's a bit disorganized in a way because like I'll, i'll give an example like for me i can i can sit on one task and do it like for a very long time uh my dear wife cannot like she gets uncomfortable she needs a variety like mm-hmm. i think it's like i noticed it even with my mom and my sisters they, they like to do many things at the same time so i would go and we have this place where we put clean laundry yes pile it pile it pile it and it just piles there so i'd go get like an audio book put on an audio book and then start sorting and organizing sort everyone's clothes <laughs> in the different categories fold the ones that need folding everything arrange the whole thing put everyone's clothes away but this exercise would take like about 5 6 hours mm. and 
it was uh, it, there was a bit of a confusion but can't you just do a few and then maybe like iterate Different. right i'm like <laughs> iterate. i'm like yeah i could but i don't think i, I would have the energy wow. to come back so it's better i just come made the thing and then leave right uh so that when i come back at least we know that thing is done we're not going back to that one uh but yeah so <clears throat> kind of taking some of those things and and learning to work with them uh it was it was mind blowing you'd say like oh so i could actually always have done this right <laughs> so the, the option was always there uh but yeah so some of those like for me they really resonate with me uh, in terms sort of like shaping your like your 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 career and your other things that you do outside of the home shaping how you you go about your home and how your home also shapes because like even even workmates giving them the uh, i was telling uh, my neighbor the other day it's like so the assumption is always if I don't know the capability of the person, I'm just going to assume they're like at a child level. It, it's fine. Like I expect them to do whatever. I won't treat, I'll try not to treat them like a child, but I will assume, <laughs> so I'll articulate everything the best way as I can and hope for the minimum. <laughs> now, in some cases, you may just get the minimum. So you just be okay with it. I allow, <laughs> nah, this is what we're dealing with. But in mm. some cases, people will come like, no, 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 what do you mean? I understand this, I understand this. So they, they will quickly go up, jump up the ranks, and you're like, oh, okay, okay, so it's fine. So I don't need to do all this work that I've been doing. So you're at this level, so it's fine. Now I know where to work with you at. But if I don't know, it's better to not assume than to assume. Because you can, you can yeah. start from up there <laughs> assuming all these things, and then <laughs> there's nothing. Like the guy you're talking about, <laughs> it's just drawing. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. <laughs> very important when you're trying to manage not only your expectations, but also mm. to support someone, right? Uh, you know, you, t- you touched on uh, imposter syndrome, uh, but you realize that as you start to figure out that, you know, you can do all these things, uh, you know, sometimes people get, the, they suffer, they, they get frozen or, you know, they freeze because of that imposter syndrome because they have been given this big task. And they are thinking, you know, can I really, you know, uh, match up to it? But if you are not really, uh, and it comes from the fear of failure, but if you've been going through a thing where, you know, because you just have to do things, Mm -hmm. right, regardless of uh, whether you're good or what, you have to do it. You will be like, you know, I mean, what's the worst that can happen? The worst, okay, I may not do well in it, right? But I will have tried and I will have learned. You know, so that attitude helps you through those moments. I had a situation um, on the weekend. My my daughter had to travel somewhere by train to do some some exam, some test, and she instead of booking a ten a.m. train to go back to school, she booked a ten p.m. train, right? And so it has happened before. Uh, where she booked for us the the the, the wrong bus, um, and you know, and we had to sort things out. So for me, I was disappointed that she made that mistake again. But now for her, because she had made the mistake again, she decided that the solution was to show me that she can solve. Uh, problem so she you know she sorted it out and then she told me oh but i'm now on the on the train back but i i messed up so again it goes back to the thing which i was telling you that i don't know um how you pass on everything because then you try but you know some things come out differently right like for me i would have preferred she had her interpretation but i would have preferred if she came immediately and said hey you know what uh, i messed up However, this is my plan. Let's have a conversation. Because uh, what I want her to recognize is that sometimes, even if you can solve it, you have to recognize that someone has more experience. Just like, you know, if you go back to my dad, 
teaching me how to cook or instructing me to cook. <laughs> when he said, you cut onions. And I said, but how do you cut? He said, yeah, you just cut it, chop, chop, chop. Make sure the pieces are small. Um, you know, I would be there and then I would chop. Then I go and show him, is, is, you know, is this the correct size? Because I know he, hmm. you know, I don't know. He knows, you know, all these things. Uh, you know, and I, I kept coming to uh, ask questions, get feedback and, and move that, that, that stuff. Because... I felt that would make a, a better product, right? Not just mm. a product, but a better product. So that's also what I want. Because again, if you're going to have excellence, uh, you have to acknowledge that not every good idea will come from your brain. And even if you have a good idea, it can still get better if you involve others. So yeah. I would have preferred if there was more communication, yes, I've messed up, uh, you know, because she was not intending to hide it forever. She was intending instead to show that, hey, you know, this thing was messed up, but I've now solved it. Uh, but we could have solved it maybe in a cheaper way, in a way that uh, gives her less stress. But at the same time, it's an experience. So for me, you know, I, they, it could have been different, but it was what it was. So we move on, uh, which is good. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's really interesting how the impetus it gives you in terms of uh, your outlook because you feel now you know i can try this thing i can you know do what i do and over time it helps you to learn about yourself you will know that yes while i can try all these things i usually so at first you'll know the exact things you're good at eventually you'll know the kind of things you're good at which is even more uh, higher level and more important right because someone will come and say you know, I want you to, I don't know, pave roads uh, or to draw lines in roads, right? So you will know that, you know, for me, because I have some kind of OCD, I think I would do well in that thing because I will make the line straight. I will know, <laughs> you know, because you will know that over time, me, I like things in side road. But if, if you know yourself to be, you know, a haphazard guy or whatever, you'll be like, no, maybe this, <laughs> this task, <laughs> you need to someone with me. <laughs> We have straight lens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, I completely agree with that. And I think it's hard to, like it takes a while to grow to a level whereby you start to acknowledge your weaknesses. It's easy to acknowledge the strength because like, you know, those, those, you, those are what you, you show off. But acknowledging the weaknesses is even harder because first of all, you're in disbelief to yourself that like, really, is, is it true that that's not my strength? It's like, what if I really work on the thing? Can't I, can't I shift that thing? And it takes a while for you to get to a place of like, yeah, yeah, that, that, that one is not for me that I, I agree. It's like, I tried, I tried so many things. And yeah, I didn't make the progress there. So I think I should, I should be okay. <laughs> that that's not my thing. And strangely, like once you get to that place whereby you acknowledge those things that you shouldn't like overinvest your effort in, then now you start to notice the same things about other people. But then now that, that's why you get these people who are jumping the gun. It's like, ah, no, 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 no. But me, let me tell you, <laughs> you're so terrible at that thing. And it's like, but the person is not yet ready to get to the yeah. place where they hear that. Or for them, it's not yet true in their perspective that they are terrible. And, and then you start fighting all these unsolicited advice and start, start unnecessary fights. So I've, I've sort of gone into a place, I have this saying where, I say you have to respect other people's suffering <laughs> mm -hmm. because it's like for you, you already suffered your thing and you got to a place where you learned from your suffering and you're okay with it. But everyone has a different pace. Everyone is yeah. like uh, at a different point, right? <laughs> so <laughs> they Remember may not program. yet have reached that point where they unlock the gift in their suffering such that they can now convert it and learn to work with the thing. Uh, and now you, you're here jumping the gun, trying <laughs> to spoil the thing for them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
but yet actually in, in, in that if book, you allow them uh, time they'll get there <laughs> yeah in, in in that book that we are talking about they they give the example of, so you see the child uh you know he falls in your view he shouldn't really be hurt but he has fallen and he's crying and then he comes and uh, you know you're like oh, oh what has happened said, i've fallen and then you say where have you fallen uh, where is it hurting it's hurting here it's hurting so much you know you're acknowledging his pain even if you feel uh, you know he should not be in, in that much pain you know but you you have to first warm your way in acknowledge his pain then tell him but you know that was a very light fall i think it should not hurt you that much after you've acknowledged that you know you're mm. you so it's hurting so much oh, it must be really painful but you know you just fell you know a little bit you know and see there's even no blood it's just a small scrape i think you should be fine yeah try and be a brave boy and then you know <laughs> take from there so similarly when um you know you're talking about your i think what you're saying about your neighbor uh, or you know someone who is going to do something and the expectation that you have uh whatever they bring mm. and sometimes what they bring may make you want to laugh or whatever but you, you have to have the good IQ to know whether you should laugh or whether you should commiserate where you, <laughs> where you should be like you know what uh okay so you know you've uh, you know done this task uh i think you could have done you know a b c d or you know that stuff uh but again the important thing is to to have honesty so when you acknowledge you do not what's the word you do not uh, lie you do not say the untruth as in you don't say you've done well no as in well done no <laughs> so you finished because at the very least <laughs> they have finished <laughs> <laughs> yeah. then you say it's so, missing these things you know <laughs> so you acknowledge their effort they are putting effort you know so you know you you completed the task but you know i i was i had hoped there would be these other things so you know you remember that thing uh, was it ask feedback um and uh, do you remember what the acronyms were is but there was something about uh, and people used to have a, an issue about how that, that first one seemed to you know suggest that you are happy with uh, what is happening um but when uh, in essence you should not be happy with what what has been <laughs> delivered if you if you exaggerate then the the person uh expects that now they have hit the the mark and but that's like over inflating it and and yet you should like you're saying you have to be truthful and appreciate but then also show show the gap and i think that's a difficult balance to strike uh, most people like even for me like i think i've only just learned to do that uh, probably maybe not so long ago before it would have been that that kind of thing where people give you what is it the is that phrase we use for the ask, the, the sandwich where the person tells you gives you a compliment then they tell you the thing that they want to complain about and then they add <laughs> compliment at the end <laughs> add the compl- yeah <laughs> and you're like just just say the thing like if you don't like something just say this is what I don't like and here is why and, and that's okay I, I had the I had a PM sometime last year and he was struggling in the same way. He wanted to give me feedback about something. And he's like, yeah, so, you know, someone complained about something, but don't take it too seriously. These people can be mean in some ways. I'm like, no, no, no. If there's a complaint, I want to know. For me, it's fine. Just tell me. I, I won't take it personal. Like, I will hear the complaint and I'll address, even if they are personal things, I, I don't take them seriously because I mean, the person complaining doesn't really know me. I know that. So they, they can't be talking about me. <laughs> and so when they got comfortable doing that with me, uh, they, they got carried away and then they tried it on someone else. And yeah, they shattered someone's day. The person was like, Oh my God, how could you tell me all those things? 
uh, now I feel like I'm worthless. I should never even try. <laughs> and you're like, no, you have, you have to filter. It's like you have, you have to, act, to really know. And, and I think it comes back to knowing, you know, your, your strength, your weaknesses, things that are, are, are most likely to be true about you. Because the, the funny thing is, even when there's, let's say, a, a complaint, even if, let's say, somebody's giving you negative feedback, there's th certain things you'd know. It's like, oh, you you tend to be, you know, you, you come to meetings late. Oh, you're time poor. It's like, yeah, that's true. I, I know I am. <laughs> that's something <laughs> I've always struggled with. I'm working on that, but I, it's not wrong. It's like, we can try to work on ways to mitigate, but yeah, I know that trait of me. And the problem is if they're, they're telling you things which are way far off, it's like things which you, you're you probably hearing about the first time. It's like, okay, it's like maybe you you speak too loudly. It's like, yeah, that's just how I speak. <laughs> so it's like, try and manage it. It's like, no, you, you need to give me a bit more strategies because that's a default setting. We're, we're not going... I don't even hear that yeah, yeah, I am loud yeah. when I am speaking. I just speak. And so, but I had to learn that about myself and, and sort of like know which thing, okay, the tempo, I think that that's a thing that I'm working on. I'm very aware of that. But this loudness thing, that's not a thing for me yet. So it doesn't matter what feedback you give me about it. There's nothing to do. It's, it's not a thing for me. Uh, so, Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, one of the, the that popped up. one of the interesting things about that that what what you are just describing there the example uh, and the, the the how you know like where you said give me strategies so mostly it, it what will help you is if you understand what that does to the other person right and and again this is something that for me mm -hmm. I have learned from my children right uh, so if I speak a certain way to my children. And I see a certain reaction, and and, and thankfully, my, I, I, I like doing a lot of post mortem. So usually, I will come and say, you know, how did that make you feel? Why did you, you know, react like that, and all that kind of stuff? Because I'm trying to understand. Sometimes it freaks certain people out. You know, like if I come at work and I'm saying, you know, when I came and shouted, I saw you looking down. What happened? But for my children, it's easy because you know we're in a safe space all the time, so <laughs> I, I can easily ask. But you know, if you understand that, okay, when you, when to me you speak loudly, uh, you know, I, I, I can't hear anything else that you're saying. So you just know, that, okay, for this person, I have to moderate a little bit. So, you know, you either you'll be slow, you'll turn it down just so that they get somewhere. There are others who, uh, like for me, I really, if I am in a place and uh, people are arguing, you know, raised voices and, and whatever, it, it raises my blood pressure, right? Uh, and so for me, my default is to try and calm the thing down in, in some way. So if I have someone like that on the team, uh, so there is uh, some place I worked, IDI, where I was on the senior leadership team and we had these two super egos that would always clash, you know, uh, and then they go back and forth and, you know, the, the meeting is going to what? To just deteriorate into nothingness. So I started researching strategies of how to diffuse those things, right? You know, like, uh, you know, at first I would try to reason uh, that failed. Uh, but the one which started to work was where I would go to the next agenda item. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. you know, that agenda item just dies because you guys decided to go off. So in time, they said, realizing that, you know, <laughs> that was what was happening. And so... <laughs> <laughs> they would have to, you know, come down quickly if they wanted that agenda item to continue. And, and, and so, you know, and just having that understanding without even having to give them the feedback that, hey, you know, you guys come here and mess up our meeting. No, you know, just they are, they are going off. And then I face everyone else and I'm like, you know, we are now discussing this. And soon they find themselves they have to now join uh, and, and move along. So it, it's it's quite interesting how everywhere whether it is you know at home or at work and having said that it's also quite interesting how many people do not acknowledge or do not believe that those two can 
can end up, you know, impacting them each each, each other in, in terms of how they, so you will find, uh, which has always fascinated me, someone who is a very good manager at, at work, you know, motivates her staff, what has the most miserable maid, you know. <laughs> <laughs> You know, at work, because I don't know, handbook, policy, and professionalism have forced them to treat people like human beings. Then they go home and then they treat people like animals. You know, it just doesn't yeah. make sense to me. Uh, but yeah, that is the world we live in. <laughs> no, no, that it's so true. Touching that thing of, you know, that juxtaposition of a person being good with their people at work and then at home, it's a completely different story. For me, I attribute it to, like, mostly I think people are out of, there's like some fragmented way of relating. And I think the more, the, the more people are, let's say, less fragmented in their ways of relating, the more you get that... Uh, that integrity cutting across you you get that same same feel of the person in every scenario but until they they are at a place where they have harmonized we we tend to do this thing of like uh you know when i'm at work i am this when i'm at home i am this and you you have all these different you know personalities you become depending on the situation yet actually you can you can just present the same one and just have uh, the same approach in, in, in the situation. And for me, like what I've found has helped a lot with that has been like appreciating that all these situations are relationships of some sort. Exactly. And if you, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and if you work on, on building it and, and making it a good relationship, it would be fine <laughs> it's because they're all the same thing and it doesn't matter like you, people are people it doesn't mm. like, like i tell this to you know colleagues at work and even at home the, the same way i treat my four-year-old is the same way i should treat a, an adult and anyone else like with the same respect with the same care and with the same concern of course with differences because you know they have different levels of understanding but that's the care like if you if you care enough then you're going to be able to do that separation mm -hmm. uh i was speaking to someone at a at a birthday party and they have uh, a child who has uh, i think one of those uh conditions uh or the neurodiverse conditions and they said what was interesting they they got given some training and in the training, they were told, um, you know, when your child is, is having like a moment and maybe they're throwing a tantrum, uh, these are some of the strategies you should take to discolate. Listen to them. Uh, don't shout back at them when they raise their voice. Try to speak with a more level tone. And, you know, try to understand what they're complaining about, offer strategies. And they said that, you know, so I asked them, so did you actually try it and it works? Like, yeah, yeah, now we tried it and it was working. But the question at the back of my mind is like, what were they doing before? Because like, because <laughs> <laughs> like me, <laughs> like this seemed quite obvious. It's like if, if, if By my, the way, my, my child is having a tantrum, it's like don't add to it, right? <laughs> no, you know what happened? Uh, let me give you an example. If you, hmm. you're talking to someone on phone, uh, and uh, they raise their voice. You also find yourself raising your voice, as in you all go like this, and yet you don't realize uh, yeah. that to bring them down, you have to go down. Then you, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so it's the same thing. You know, um, there was one thing I saw one time. Uh, one of those, I think, it was uh, uh, Steve Harvey or something. Not Steve Harvey. This guy of highly effective people, Steve Covey. And, you know, he was trying to show Steve Cole, um, yeah. the way to approach things so that you get a, a more compliant result, right? So he was showing that when you push someone, uh, unfortunately, I can't push you because you're over there, but let me try and push myself. But if you come like this, right, 
my first reaction will be to push to push back. But if Johan comes slowly and pushes me, I will go yeah, in that direction. So, you know, he was trying to say that, you know, don't, <laughs> if you want to get a compliant, don't come like that, go, you know, like that, and you more likely to get the person to go in that direction where you want them to go. And, and so it, mm. it is not obvious because everyone wants to meet fire with fire. You know, you, the child is think they are screaming. You're also shouting at them, stop that, stop that. You know, it's not obvious that you're supposed to just say, you know what, stop that. <laughs> you know, you're supposed yeah, to be I, I think I think we run we, we, like we run out the, of the patience. Yes. By the way, that's another thing which you also have to acknowledge and not beat yourself about. Uh there are times when you know you will be impatient. You don't have time for doing things properly. You just shout. Uh don't don't berate yourself too much, it happens, but don't let it happen too much also. And I think that's that that's the key what you've said there at the end. Like don't let it happen too much. It's like because some you, like you you fall into this trap of trying to be perfect, right? But that's it's not going to happen. Uh, yeah. So the like I the, I think the, the, the policy we 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 started at home is like cleaning up your mess. It's sort of like cleaning up your mess, right? uh you you make a mess it's fine <laughs> it's, it's not about trying to stop you from ever making a mess cuz yeah good luck with that but just clean it up so that <laughs> the place can still be usable by someone else and and you've corrected whatever you set out of order and, and learning that you know i i told the, in you know the different you, scenarios, I think it really helps to to maintain some level of sanity and bring back things to some kind of balance. Otherwise, uh, man, you end up trapped in some cheap thing which you don't even know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Anyway, uh, I don't want to push it too far. Uh, we'll probably have to set up another one and pick it up from there. Um Unless you you had something to add, uh, but I would like us to wrap it up at this point, and then uh, we, we can set up another one for next time and just dive into another rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 uh, agreeable with me. Uh, yeah, but it was very good talking about these things and and seeing, uh, especially from, from your side. While for me things have gone from the home to work, uh, for you they have come from work to home. Like I said, <laughs> yeah. in all these things, you know, you, you keep learning and you keep, you know, uh, seeing these good experiences. So good, good stuff. Good chat. Yeah, definitely.